Everybody ready? Yeah. Okay. And Coach Craig Smith, thoughts on this one? <clears throat> well, first of all, congratulations to San Diego State. Uh, it was a great win for them. Um, obviously, uh, coming here, you know, not many people have um, beaten us at our place. Uh, unbelievable crowd, great atmosphere. It's one of the best atmospheres, obviously, in all of college basketball. And so I want to thank our fans for coming out and um, helping us out. But they're good. They're really, really good. Uh, they made a lot of big-time plays, uh, made a lot of plays late in the clock. Um, you know, in the first half, uh, uh, Flynn hits, <laughs> hits the one in the left wing, you know, from three, from deep, and we're kind of flying in there, and he has the poise to shot fake and gets us flying by and knocks it down, and uh, Mitchell made some big plays late clock, uh, but their whole team did, and so um, you got to give them a lot of credit. You know, certainly uh, it's going to be hard to beat a quality team like that when they shoot 50.9%, you know, for the game. Um, and then we had some self-inflicted things as well, you know, from the free throw line, right? The first half we go five for 10, plus we miss a front end. And we're one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. And and sometimes those things happen. Um, but we got to be able to consistently knock those, knock those down. And then I thought late in the game, you know, we really <clears throat> made a good rally and Gave ourselves a chance, and the crowd was really into it, and we're down seven, and uh, we're picking up full court, and we get a foul about, you know, eight, I don't know, 85 to 90 feet away from the basket, and that gives them two points, and then the next possession we foul at half court, and and that gives them two more, and those are just, uh, you know, those are some things that are self-inflicted that they didn't really cause us to do. We did it ourselves, but, and they made us pay, and that's what great teams do, so Proud of our effort. I thought we played our tails off. Um, uh, missed some good looks. They just didn't fall. Um, and we got to get that short up. And um, But, you know, we got to bounce back. We have three games in seven days. It's the first time in 52 games that we haven't lost back-to-back -back games. Um, or where we did lose back-to-back -back games. And, and so it was a tough week for the Aggies, certainly. Um, but we have no uh, time to feel sorry for ourselves and sulk. It should hurt. It should be painful. Um, but when you play hard and you give it everything you got, you know, sometimes it doesn't always turn out the way you want it to be. But I was proud of our effort. And we're going to find out what we're really made out of tomorrow and Monday. And because Clune Arena at Air Force is not an easy place to play, and they can put points up in a hurry. So uh, got to be ready to roll. Questions? Coach, um, shooting has kind of been a bit of an issue in some of the team losses this season. Um, but it's not looking. That's a trust me. I wish I had that answer. I've been trying to figure that out for three months. Um, you know, we've been inconsistent. There's no doubt. Um, um, you know, we don't have a ton of playmaking, and so the ball really has to move for us to make those kind of things happen. Um, our transition game hasn't been quite as good here lately. Um, but so it's twofold: guys getting in the gym to get extra shots. We're certainly looking at ourselves and what can we do as coaching staff to help our guys be put in a better position to get more rhythm shots, right? Where rhythm, good passing teams are good shooting teams. And we've been a little bit inconsistent with how we're moving the ball and sharing the ball. We've got to be a better screening team and to free some guys up. Um, certainly having Nimi back tonight helps create some of those easy shots. Um, that's where we've, we've We've certainly missed them some on the defensive end, um, but where we've really missed them is offensively, not only with his ability to score, like you saw tonight, but he's a playmaker as well. Like, he makes the right pass. He understands spacing. You know what I mean? He just flows with it. And and, and then when we lost Kuba, Kuba's pretty good with that too. Uh, can't score like Mimi, but he's got a feel with that. And so it's been a work in progress for sure. So, Coach... Tied the game at 11, and he missed seven straight shots. I like your haircut. So, how much do you feel like that changed the game where you had missed seven straight shots where you were in the game and defending and playing offense? Uh, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Just that you tied the game at 11, and then you missed oh. seven straight shots. How do you feel like that changed the game where you were playing pretty well? <laughs> well, yeah, it was, we just couldn't score, um, certainly. And, you know, you, you just can't go in those. When you're playing the, the better teams that you play, you just can't afford to go in those kind of ruts. And, and some of those are missed free throws where you can kind of keep them at bay, you know, and not let them get away with you, so to speak. Then there was a stretch there in the second half where 
I thought they were getting really downhill on us. And even if they weren't scoring directly at the rim, um, they were throwing it up there and their weak side rebounding was coming in. They got a couple of wide open, uncontested you know, rebounds where I'm not sure they had to totally earned it. So I thought we tightened that up, though, and did a much better job of that um, after that point. But a team like that, you, you know, a team's never going to play perfect, but they put a lot of pressure on you and your mistakes really get accentuated. Very similar situation the last team started out one and two and then you build off of working on things. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like a lot of the players being in that situation, do you feel that's a benefit to you to have that experience? Or maybe it's a little bit of a curse that you might be making you just Oh no, I, I think it's a benefit because you know you you can do it and we've done it before. At the same time, I don't think I'm not sure you can look at it like that. I think you gotta look at it um, just truly let's get better tomorrow. And I know nobody likes to hear this stuff, but let's just get better tomorrow. And then let's get better again on Monday. And now we have an opportunity again on Tuesday to go earn victory. And every night you got to go out and earn it. And um, and so so I think it helps us. But you can't get 15 wins at one time or whatever it is. I mean, you know what? We're 13 and four, so 17, so 14 regular season games left. Um, uh, you just got to chip away at it. And I don't think any of our guys thought that initially we could do what we did last year. We just approached it like let's go beat Wyoming. Let's go beat San Jose, right? Let's beat whoever it was next, Colorado State, I think. And so um, I think that's the mindset that you have to have. How does this change how you approach the Mountain West Conference? I mean, now you're, you're down two games, um, one of them, you, know, you probably didn't expect to be down, or you probably didn't expect to be in this position. Yeah. Um, I don't, I mean, we can't, we don't control our destiny, so that's different. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's very difficult to go through a whole season losing, let, let's say they lose one game or two, you know. So we just got to truly worry about us. Let's get better. Let's be our best at the end of the year. Let's get healthy across the board. Um, and, um, and then let's let, let the chips fall where they may. But this one stinks, certainly, because um, uh, I loved how we competed. Usually we're really, really good at home. And I didn't think we were bad. They just were a little bit better than us tonight. Anything else? I just saw Nemean's Davis play tonight. Yeah. He played a 30 minutes, which is, a, of course, a season high. Um, how did he react to those 30 minutes? How was he playing late? How did he play great? Nemi hasn't done a thing since the Florida game. Uh, when I say hasn't done a thing, he hasn't done a thing live since the Florida game. Um, he just started working out individually, actually, the day we played UNLV, so three days ago. And so this was a last second deal. Um, today where he got cleared uh, literally, literally an hour and a half before game time. So for him to, to A, get cleared and B, to have the mental fortitude to, to roll with it, I thought was huge. And obviously he made a huge impact on the game um, tonight. And so Nimi's really, really good. Sometimes I think you, for, not you, but sometimes maybe people forget the kind of impact that that guy has on our team. And in basketball, or for a lot of team sports, for that matter, we all know when you you know when you have high impact players and then they're not playing it, it you have to you're different and you just got to figure some things out. And we've been shuffling a lot of things throughout the course of the year. And I give our guys a lot of credit to be as difficult of a week as it's been. Our guys have really um, adjusted to a lot of different things with what we've had going on in terms of some injuries and specifically Nimi. Having Nimi back, does that help take a little load off of Sam? It seems like Sam got he's getting tired. He's, he has a, a big load to carry. Yeah, Sam's dealing with some health issues right now um, as well. Um, right after <laughs> about eight days ago, um, he had an injury that, that um, has hindered him a little bit here. Uh, he, that guy's just so tough. But certainly, you know, kind of having the one-two punch back. we got to find some consistency on the offensive end. Um, from some different guys, you know, whether it's uh, whoever it might be. You can look right down the line, and we just got to get more consistency from our guys. But I have full belief that we're going to do that, and we're going to find a way. But having him back certainly gives us a whole different, you know, dimension on the offense, well, on both sides of the ball. Thanks. All right, thank you, guys.
All right, senior guard Sam Merrill, thoughts on this one? Um, lots of credit to San Diego State. Um, very, very good team. Much improved, and uh, obviously we didn't we didn't play our best. Um, thought our energy, our mindset was much better from from what happened on Wednesday. Um, still didn't play our best. Um, credit to our crowd, who was fantastic. Um, um, that was awesome, and we're obviously. It's unfortunate that we were, that we disappointed them, but uh, yeah, lots of credit to San Diego State, who's a very good team. Questions for Zach? What's the biggest difference between that team last year and this this team this year? San Diego State, it seems like. Um, quite a few things. I mean, obviously they have some new players who are really impactful. Um, big kid, and then their two guards are both very good players, and um, they're much more sound than they were a year ago. Execute much better. They're shooting a lot better. Um, so, like I said, a lot of credit to them. They've um, the, the returners have put in the work and improved. Uh, Matt Mitchell's gotten much better. Shackles shooting the ball really well, um, and their new guys have really helped them out a ton. In the first half, you guys had some struggles with the free throw line, this front end, some more ones. How much did that hurt ultimately? Yeah, I think it's doesn't happen very often. I think we're we were one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country, um, and that, that stuff happens. And obviously, it did hurt because we we're down seven and missed five, but two front ends. So we're essentially five for twelve in the first half. So um, you never want to dig a hole, and uh, that was rough. But I think from the free throw line, we'll be fine going forward. Sam, the uh, Sam State players have complained about this night. Shackles said it's like an outdoor ball. Um, and I know you don't want to make excuses. They don't want to make excuses either, but they haven't shot well. They've been struggling better than You guys have not shot well with it all year. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's not our favorite ball. Just like uh, I actually read your article today, and it's, we have similar similar thoughts on it, but the best shooters can, can shoot with any ball. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's the ball that's affecting us right now. I think we just got to get through this little funk that we're in. Anything else for Sam? Coach said that you had been playing injured. Can you expand on that? Um, yeah, we just, as a team, um, got a few guys going through some stuff. Um, but we don't we don't want to make any excuses. And um, Hopefully the guys that are that are going through some stuff can, can get healthy. And um, it'll, Obviously, it's our next game is coming up quick. We play. We don't. We don't have that Wednesday game. We play straight on Tuesday against a good Air Force team. So, um, whatever we are going through as a team, we just need to work to work to get through it. Are you 100? percent um, No, but I don't think. Like I said, I don't want to make excuses for anybody. But and at this point of the season, it's hard for guys to be at 100. percent So, um, but like I said, I don't want to make excuses. How tough is it for you guys? Um, I think, I don't know, I don't think it's an issue. Um, you know, with Nimi, we have a, you know, we've played so many games without him to this point this season where um, for us at this point, if he does play, and I think he played a ton of minutes tonight, so I would, I would think he'll be fine going forward. Um, it's a plus if he does play. But we're almost preparing like he's not playing, and then if he does, great. Um, and I hopefully anticipate him to play consecutively going forward. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. There's no...